I don't know, Stugat, if you have noticed this, but it is something that has caught my attention recently as we go through another weekend where you cannot keep up with the mass shootings. There are so many of them, and it is a part of such normal daily life in this country that I shouldn't be surprised about what I'm about to say, but it is still surprising to me because I hope for a different kind of ideal. When I am driving uh, past like multiple graduation public places and I see the number of armed guards surrounding what can't be the optics of graduates going down with gunfire, I think to myself, this is not my country, but it is. Well, it is now, but yeah. it is most obviously. Yes. It is my country more than it is any other country. I, I don't want to like. Never mind American exceptionalism of believing that our country is somehow better than everybody else's. But we're appreciably worse here in a way that must horrify other countries and think of us as a lawless hellscape that can't protect its children, its churchgoers, its grocery store. Uh, Scott's when you look it's not that we can't Dan it's that we won't okay and that's well, the for me no. that's the disturbing part okay you but know? can't or can't or won't there there isn't enough movement on any of this stuff no matter that this weekend after already lamenting the way we did the 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 horror the the most unspeakable of the horrors which is the slaying of children okay and it just was just a weekend of run of the mill, about 10 of them. Like I was eight or nine, and there's another one in Tennessee, and they're all over the place. And then fomenting this stuff is the, you know, senatorial candidate endorsed by Trump in Arizona who's saying the problems with guns are black people, frankly. And the divisions being brought upon by others. When you talk about, I don't know if you've seen any of the footage in the Buffalo supermarket, for example, Stugatz, this is not weaponry that's necessary to be hands of civilians under any circumstances. It's like bullets that just make people die on the spot where their bodies don't move at all. It's like the movies. They just die, and then the only time they move again is if you put another bullet in them from the... Like, they're just... This is not a normal thing to be walking around, to be able to walk around with this kind of weaponry that its only tool is to destroy human life. These are weapons that were made for soldiers, for soldiers who are in the military. That's what they're made for. And that's part of the debate. It's a small part of the debate is why are those weapons available to an 18-year-old kid who simply just turned 18? I, I just can't believe that beyond being tired of the debate or politics or gun talk or whatever it is, I can't believe that what we're not tired of is... It can't be 10 in a weekend all over the country after we were just wailing about children being slaughtered. Like, it just, that that can't be the country that we don't have the leaders to do anything more active than that other than lament with us. Any, any action that represents, hey, can we not be the very, very worst at this? Can we do something with our leadership that would make it so that we wouldn't be the worst country in the world at, at slaughtering each other. But that's why it's political. Like, this is an entirely political issue. And it's why I think people are starting to get tired of, oh, well, let's take the politics out of it for now. Let's think about the families. This is 100% political. The only means of beginning to solve this problem are a consensus of U.S. congressmen deciding to do something, whether it's voting beyond the filibuster, whether it's changing the minds of Republicans. But common sense gun legislation has already passed the U.S. House of Representatives. It just has to be voted on by the Senate. They're going to vote on more common sense gun legislation this week in the House of Representatives. It will pass. It will die in the Senate. And this is 100% pure politics. Republicans do not view it within their incentives to solve this problem, or at least begin to try to solve this problem. Instead, it's about obfuscating, it's about blaming it on video games, it's about blaming it on mental health, it's about blaming it on race, and there's polling that shows. What do you blame this issue on? And the number of issues on down is vast. There's, you know, percentages on behalf of everything. And the number one is the weapons grade that is out there in public, And but it's only at 54%, I saw in a CBS News poll. So it's not as consensus of an issue as we think. 
And those senators do not view it within their political incentives to change it. So, yeah, this is who we are. I wonder. This is, this is the country that we've asked for. I wonder if they would, uh, the, how fast the legislation would change if all of a sudden the only ones armed with these kinds of guns were black people. You want to see how quickly things moved on that? If... If the only if you wanted to see legislation actually move because of the stuff being fomented on fear of the others, where cries for equality, cries for equality are rejected soundly with a no, and let me go get my gun. Let's segue here into some lighter stuff. I just I don't want to go through weekends where this becomes a normal thing and it's just like, oh, we had another dozen this week. And there was one in Tennessee last night, okay. It's becoming normal, Dan. I mean, well, no, it's become. It's it's over two hundred of these. Uh, it, it's it's June, Stugatz. It's over two hundred of these since the start of the year. Like we're, yeah, we are we are more screwed up in this realm than any place uh, in the globe. Here's the CBS News polling. So one question was: Do you feel that mass shootings are unfortunately something we have to accept as part of a free society? 28% of Americans believe that that's something we just have to accept as part of a free society. 72% believe it's something we can prevent and stop if we really tried. And then the next question is, why do you think the U.S. has more mass shootings than any other countries? Check all that apply. Number one is it has more availability of guns, but that's only 54% of the CBS News respondents. Second at 47% is it has more people with mental health issues. Third, it is it has more racial division. Four is the influence of violent movies and video games at 37%. And then you go to its cultural and values. It has more criminals. It's a more free country are the fifth, sixth, and seventh most popular answers. But uh, everyone has a different answer for this. As much as we think that... It, no, in, no, one in, in has room, a, no one actually has an answer correct. for this. I mean, so I've read statistics that like... This. Statistically, the United States has ar around the same amount of people with like mental illness than other countries, but we have more shootings per capita. But I find it so deeply depressing and, and like ideologically lacking that the same party that blames that on mental illness also is vehemently against any sort of universal health care and cuts spending towards mental health issues. So it really, like Woody said, it's all political. It's all ideologically void. Like it's just a fucking black abyss of depressing shit when you look at it. All right, let's move on. Let's assemble the committee, shall oh. we, uh, to get together to finally address what it is that Stugatz has wow. brought up for nomination. He sent me the screenshot this weekend of Joe Musgrove, eight innings. What was it? One, was it one hit or one run? It was uh, one hit, uh, no runs. Uh, 111 pitches, just goes out there and basically says, bleep you, here, I'm eat, eat this. I'm going to keep throwing it up there, and you're going to keep grounding out to the shortstop. Uh, he certainly has a great name. He is certainly built the right way. He goes deep in just about every game. Uh, he's a really good pitcher, and I am ready. And I'm not certain we'll have many opportunities to do this moving forward because of the way baseball has changed. But I am ready to declare that Joe Musgrove is a horse. Now, we need a ruling on this, but I believe he is the definition of a horse. Whittingham, do you have the hierarchy back there? Now, a horse, Are you? do you want to give him caballo status? Because to me, it's different. I thought that the highest form of flattery that we could bestow upon a major league pitcher is the Spanish word caballo, which is Spanish word for horse, which is higher than the English word. For horse. Why? Because this is the one play where, place where Latins get to exceed equality. <laughs> right here. Yep. This is the place. The caballo is a is a better thing to bestow upon your pitcher as a nickname than merely to make him a horse. But you're not bringing him up here for caballo status, correct? You're bringing him I up mean, here. I mean, that's up to the committee. I am just simply saying I believe that Joe Musgrove is a horse. I'll let the committee but decide. But what is the application, though? You're just saying horse. You're not bringing him for the ultimate nomination, which is caballo. Um, I don't think he's there yet, Dan. Like, he'll go six innings, seven innings. He just went eight innings. He needs to go eight or nine innings a little bit more frequently. He has like one eight-inning game. Right, like year. Adam Wainwright. Okay, he needs Wait, to nobody do that. Nobody goes eight innings. What kind of standards? Uh, is six nobody and seven is the new eight, but he just went eight. No. Uh, no, no, six and seven is the new eight. I'm impressed when someone goes seven innings. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the poll. Is six and seven innings the new eight innings? <laughs> The guy averages six and two-thirds a start. 
which that, in the modern era that, is pretty damn impressive. It is. It's it is a diluted horse, but a but a Clydesdale nonetheless. Like if you go a steady six and two thirds, I think the standards have changed so much that you can nominate someone for horse status if they merely go six and two thirds consistently. <laughs> That's the problem. You guys are settling for mediocrity and celebrating it as greatness. Six innings is great now. GTFOH. So rejected by uh, you as a committee member on 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 horse. Who get does Sandy get to be a horse? Is Sandy closer? Uh, really? Well, he's gone eight four times this if year. He made his okay. teammates better, maybe. Sandy. Well, he's not an ace. He's not an ace. What? I thought horse was higher than ace. Well, wait a minute. Isn't horse higher than ace? We need horse to go is, over horse this is again. Below ace. It is. My, on my hierarchy, yeah. Really? No. I don't think that's, that's no, not right. No, ace is yes, ace is above horse. You can be a horse. A horse is like a guy who eats a lot, like pitches no, a lot Ver of innings. Verlander's he's not a, a horse. Yeah. No, it's not an, an ace. No, that's he's an, a horse that's and an, an, an ace. That's an innings eater. That's a not ace. a horse. That's yeah. not a grazer. A horse is a guy you can ride. I can ride. Yeah. yeah. Hubba hubba. Verlander's a horse. What is the hierarchy? I want he's to also an ace, though. You would agree, yeah. right? Yeah. Can you be he a horse? He might be the last ace. You're, you're, the mean, last no. horse ace. Yeah. All right. The hierarchy is from bottom to top. Opener. Spot starter. Get opener out of there. <laughs> Your friend did Every that the time other day. Richard Blyer. Didn't mean? work. What? What do you? Who? Richard Blyer. Marlon's reliever. He I went to high school with him. Yeah. Good friend. Your uh, friend? Yeah. They went like, to high school together. Friend. Yeah. They text. Mm -hmm. <laughs> FaceTime him right now. <laughs> Get him on the show. You would say no to him as a guest, probably. Well, not know. if he's your friend. If we just talked to him about you as a friend, I think I think that would be a good interview. Normally, I would say no, but put it on the poll, Guillermo. Do you want us to interview Chris's Marlins friend? It's odd. <laughs> so after spot starter, we got five innings, three earned, innings eater, knuckleballer, ground ball specialist, workhorse, Knuckleballer is not a classification as a... Why not? Yeah. Why are we arguing about this again? I thought we had already We're determined We're doing levels that. of a pitcher, and yeah. a knuckleballer is just a type of pitcher. Yeah. yeah. You could be a, a great knuckleballer, well, right? you could be a terrible... You could be... Who, who's a great knuckleballer? Bollocks R.A. Dickey. He was. Yeah. He's he was. Yeah. great for like two years. I mean, list is shite. It's a really good two years. Workhorse, <laughs> flamethrower, crafty, <laughs> top of the rotation, horse, ace... God, caballo, okay. caballote. Okay. I have a question because Tony brought it up back here, Dan. Has there ever been a bad knuckleballer in the majors? Not in the big. I don't think well, so. I don't think they're good or bad. I think they just go out there and give you an ERA of four and a half. And unless they're no. R.A. Dickey every once in a while going for the Cy Young or Tim Wakefield. The knuckleballer is, is dead now, correct? Completely dead. There's no one. Is there anyone throwing the knuckleball now? Someone has to be throwing yeah. I would say Tim Wakefield was None of bad. us have one. We're just like, yeah. No, there has <laughs> to be. There's got to be. Well, wait a minute. The, the knuckleballer didn't go extinct without anyone telling us. As long it? as there's breath in my lungs, there's a knuckleballer out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. As long as there is breath in your lungs, will there be a knuckleballer out there? There should well be more said. because if you, if you notice, I, I mean, I don't have any stats to back this, but I don't care. I'm going with it regardless. I would say that the position players that are pitching – have a much better ERA than average pitchers do. Because they're all just going out there throwing the ball like 35 miles an hour, and the hitters are so confused that they like they just get under it, they pop up. Like, nary a run is scored off of a position player. Sometimes, but not always. I loved uh, when baseball analysis was, uh, was starting uh, strong. I loved the people who would do the analytics on how a knuckleballer would screw up your hitters the next day. For fa for fa the preparing uh, the preparing for a knuckleball would screw you up the next day as well because you're sitting out there hitting those 45 mile an hour butterflies. There's nothing that I hated more like growing up watching the Marlins than when Jamie Moyer was coming to play yeah. against them. And I don't even remember if he was a knuckleballer or if he could just only no, he, hit it was just 75. Slop. It was just slop. He, could it wasn't only a, hit he like was not a knuckleballer. 72. He was just old and he threw uh, croutons up Anytime there. Anytime there's a knuckleballer or, or just oh, an yeah. old man that could throw the ball really slow, I yeah. knew like this team can only hit fastballs and this is going to be a long day and a long week because they're not going to be able to figure it out. And it's frustrating because you're just seeing these meatballs go over the plate. You're like, how... How can you not deal with this? This is so slow. <laughs> Hit the baseball. And yet 
Jamie Moyer had a 20 year career. He was 40. He was still pitching. What is the what is the r ruling of the committee? Is uh, Stugatz is nominated? I, I need some sort of formal ruling from the committee. He has nominated Joe Musgrove. Uh, Billy is passionately against Chris. Are you uh, are you willing to give him horse status because horse status is before ace? We just fit. horse is not an ace. Chris, before you answer, I have good news on the knuckleballer front. There is still one remaining. Mickey Janis of the Orioles is still throwing it. Okay. See? <laughs> the worst team in the league. <laughs> He's still out there, though, keeping the species alive. It, it also will not seems go so Mickey, extinct. Mickey Janis has only pitched one game in 2021. Oh. Well. In, still, in, in Major League Baseball. He's still he trying. He's still breath in my lungs. Yeah. He's currently with the Chicago <laughs> Dogs of the American <laughs> Association of Professional That's Baseball, which I don't think is in Major League Baseball. Uh, so I, so I, it is extinct. So it is extinct for now, yeah. But extinct Although, in the majors doesn't make it extinct as a species. Yeah, exactly. This may surprise you, Dan, but there are only 33 pitchers who have ever thrown a knuckleball in a Major League game, according no, that's to wrong. Wikipedia. That's Which I, I was surprised how small that number was. I don't think that's wrong, Billy. Why would you think that that's, that's wrong. wrong? That's wrong. It's, let's all name knuckleballers we can think of and see. If well, no, we'd there. never come up with no, we'd never come up with thirty three of them. Uh, thirty three sounds about right to me. It's a terrifying way to make a living. Imagine all these guys; they're just failed pitchers who developed some other. St whoa, whoa. Uh, whoa, failed pitcher! Someone with like a fifteen twenty year career is a failed pitcher. Yeah. Well, Jimmy whoa. Moyer is not a knuckleballer. You made him a knuckleballer just because he throws Tim soft. Tim Wade soft yeah. Yeah. yeah, across decades. There yeah. are a couple of guys who are exceptions, but largely the knuckleballer is a novelty freak who comes out and it is hard to make a freak. living that way. Jeez. Freak, what are you doing? I don't doing? like how you're describing these things. Yeah. Right? Really? Is it Phil Negro in the Hall of Fame? I mean, is he? I don't think so. You don't think so? He what? is in the Hall of Fame. 319 there are, wins. There are four knuckleballers. <laughs> what what in was his career? What's your standard for the Hall of Fame? No, that's he also my, had 274 that's my losses. No, that's my bad. He just pitched forever, <laughs> and I should know that. Nickname Nux compiler. That is a classic compiler right there. Phil Dangerous Negro nickname. in the Hall of Fame with 300 wins and 280 losses. <laughs> Jesus, he pitched for 24 years. <laughs> he started he had a, 716 games. He had a 3.35 ERA. I mean, that's legit good. He pitched in Major League Baseball until he was it's 48. Not you're right, Stugatz. I stand corrected. It is my bad. I should have known. Uh, I think of Phil and Joe Negro as the same kind of uh, pitchers, and they are not. Joe Negro was not a Hall of Famer, and Phil Negro was. But go ahead and Google image search uh, Phil Negro so you can see. Please, enjoy. <laughs> I want you visually to enjoy what he looked like in a Braves uniform. And you tell me if that is a baseball Hall of Famer, the way that you look at bodies today. It's like Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> you need. Yeah, he does. He, 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 he looks, looks like, like, he looks like Gary. He looks like Gary Busey in that movie with, with Henry Rowan Gardner. Uh, what was it? Rookie of the Year. Uh, he also, he looks like a bit, also Gaylord Perry looked like this too. The old pitcher in the movie Major League, the old slop ball thrower. <laughs> it, 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 he's just an old man on the mound is what he is. Jessica, what is your opinion here? <laughs> he looks like that a, is a not retired him. chemistry Wait a professor. Minute. Yes, 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 That's it, him when he's still yes, playing? Yes, His yes, hair is yes, so yes, long and I think it's coming out of his ears. ears. He's oh, wearing a polo under that shirt. Listen that can't be right. This is, this is what... He looks like Uncle Dick. Listen, when you could throw the yeah. knuckleball, Uncle the Dick got a hole in one. Like right, he did. You could pitch it's forever. Hair. Yeah, yeah. Chris, he could be my dad's brother, and he's, is, that's when he's still playing. You're telling me. What is five o'clock right. shadow when it's no longer a shadow and it's just permanent <laughs> stubble on your face? Chris, that was his prime. <laughs> Which uniform is he in there, Chris? Because he wore a lot of different uniforms. Is that the Braves uniform? Because yeah, Braves. the reason I have underestimated him as not a Hall of Famer, Chris, is specifically because of how I remember him looking at the end. And I'm like, that can't be a Hall of Famer. Like, that simply can't. It's an old man who shouldn't be wearing a baseball uniform. It's really the ear hair he needs oh, to get trimmed. It's God. just... Too I long. would not it's let not a that good person. Hair shape. I would not let that person in my house to fix the plum. You know, something with the plumbing. That hmm. person needs to go and get me somebody else. Hmm. <laughs> Joe Negro, by the way, was a uh, two twenty one and two oh four. I mean, <laughs> the Negroes would go out there and eat the innings and they would win one time and then they'd lose one time and they'd win one time and then they'd lose one time and you wouldn't win anything with them. 
but Phil would have a three and a half ERA, which yes, all the fame. You're yeah. so right about it being a terrifying way to make a living, though, because every once in a while you see Tim Wakefield throw a flat knuckleball and it doesn't do the knuckleball thing. Wait, and it is absolutely Chris, destroyed. Chris, you have to get it, it right out, every right. time. Wait, yes. I want both Chris's, both of you. I want you both to look at me right now, and I want. The Google image search that you just did, the least flattering one that Phil Necro has. I want to you to imagine him releasing one of those 64 mile an hour old man flutter balls, and now Giancarlo Stanton has decided to hit it straight up the middle. No, he wouldn't catch up to it. <laughs> Stanton would not hit a knuckle. Yeah. Uh, trust me, that's going back to what I was telling you. Stanton could not hit that. Especially if it was low and away. But oh, he'd God. stare at that 72 mile an hour fastball right down the middle, though, because he's guessing knuckleball. That's what Stan would do. Work fine with Stan. We don't have any problems. Yeah, with no, him. it's fine. Okay. okay. Then, Let this go. Then this somebody healthy. else who hits the ball 115 miles Aaron an hour. Judge. Back, uh, back to the mound. <laughs> oh, he'd crush it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if you guys, as uh, Quinn Snyder steps down, Stugat. What about Musgrove? I think we decided that he was a horse, but not an ace. I think we were okay. Nah, he's Bill, not a horse. Billy, Billy, no. he's not top five in innings. No, nah, he's not mm. a horse. No. He's mm. good. Yeah. All right. He does have one start fewer than most of the guys <laughs> towards the top. Ooh. I think if you do, all right, I'm a, back. Horse. If you do it on a per innings basis, he's probably one of the or a per start basis. He's probably one of the most Chris Cody. Ask pitchers. ask Tim Kirchin and ask Boog Shambi and don't give them any explanation. Can we? Are we? Okay, describing uh, elevating Musgrove to horse. And are there any knuckleballers anywhere? Right. Yes, ask them both questions. But Andy Larson on the uh, Quinn Snyder thing, Stugatz. And I think Jessica is still someone here who cares about journalism ing as it relates to the coverage of sports. So when Andy Larson reports the following to spell out the situation, CAA represented. I'm sorry, CAA represented Donovan Mitchell had CAA represented Woj release that Donovan Mitchell was, quote, surprised and disappointed about Quinn's departure, something that's been rumored for, for months. Exactly zero people are surprised so that CAA represented Johnny Bryant can get the job. What do you guys do with the fact that these agencies, whether it be Clutch or CAA or your Knicks are run by one of these agencies, yep. that they've got their tentacles into so much of the player movement, the player power, the player storyline, that Andy Larson is basically accusing Woj here of doing the bidding of the agency in order to... Uh, you know, frame this story in a way that is more palatable to the masses. It'd be really crazy if Andy Larson was rep by CAA too. <laughs> I'm actually kind of amazed that a reporter, a beat reporter in a small market like Salt Lake City would have a go at someone who could potentially be a source because you're basically putting out the business that this is what's about to happen. And it would look really bad now if the Utah Jazz went and hired this coach because it would look like a completely orchestrated move by Donovan Mitchell. Like, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that the reporter was willing to be honest and forth right here because that's honestly not a lot of... You don't see a lot of that kind of coverage. Like, basically, completely revealing how the sausage is made. It's why Basketball Illuminati on our Levitard and Friends podcast network is so illuminating is because they do bring you a lot of that information. But this feels like a top-down CAA orchestration to get Donovan Mitchell more power in a place that he might leave anyway. That's bad, though. Like, beat reporters should not have to worry about being shunned from access or from sources by just reporting the news. Like, I don't know if it, it ever used, like journalism ever used to be like pure in its form, but it does seem like the leagues have gotten more sensitive to, to beat reporters and smaller outlets, like having access after they say something that the leagues or the teams don't like. And I think that that's just terrible in, in general for, for media and for fans. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this reporter just did this because he might have already pissed off the Mitchell camp. So it's like, ah, what do I care? I've thought about this for a long time. Uh, because I've watched as at these games, these seats courtside that used to go to media members who were selling the game to the country have been, the media has been kicked out so that the good seats can go to rich people who are needed, whose money is needed. 
Do any of these people, Donovan Mitchell or anyone like him, do they need to care about the media at all? Like, do they need, what value do beat reporters have in the modern age, the coverage? I, I know you want people writing about your team, but it seems like they're going to do it whether they have access to the players or not. Well, that's, I think, how they've gotten away with it because now you don't really need them. You don't need the coverage as much as you used to when, like, the teams were a lot smaller and localized. But I would argue that having a healthy, cynical media outlet attached to your team is good because it's just a, a healthy thing to have. But if you're hiding something, you're obviously not going to want that. Well, but wait a minute. Your you're saying it's a healthy thing from the perspective of... Of, like, everyday people who consume league coverage. Okay, but, but that's, I mean... The, but that's your that's view, your viewpoint as a consumer. You're giving yes. what you want. But why would, why would the leagues or Donovan Mitchell or the teams at all need us anymore, given that they all have their own platforms, they all have their own branding, and... Yes, I agree. That's why it's changed, I think, because they don't need... They don't need you to write a column in the newspaper to get coverage. There's like 24-7 access to all of these teams. They have their own media team. Like every team now has its own media department that creates content, which is basically just propaganda about itself. And like they're perfectly happy doing that because then if anything bad happens behind the scenes, you as a fan might not even know about it because unless you're reading the local paper where the reporter might have access to that but story I, I, and might write about it without fear of being retaliated against, you won't even know about it. But that's becoming less and less common, I think. I also like, I, I wonder about if the reason that so many of the investigations about like the commanders and Deshaun Watson and all the national stories are coming from national reporters and not from local beat reporters anymore. And I think it's a combination of the fact that local news has been decimated by big companies and by media conglomerates. And so they don't have like if you're a, if you're a beat reporter, you can't take a month to investigate a story because you need a certain amount of output uh, these days. And also because those people are more at risk of getting their credential denied if they report something that a team doesn't like. Yeah, I th I, you know, local coverage is absolutely but it's also like the it's the game of if you don't have a good relationship with the team in your city, then you sort of at a certain point cease to be of use to your outlet. Right. Like if you can't bring anything exclusive to the table, then what are you bringing to the table? And I think that's the trade that a lot of reporters make where it's all right, I'm not going to report this because I need this relationship. I need this source. I'm kind of amazed that this guy went out on this ledge. You but also, But I do think, Dan, to, to argue what you were saying, which is that they don't need us. Then why is Donovan Mitchell trying to spin a narrative that he was surprised? Like if, if he doesn't need the media, why is there a piece in ESPN describing him as surprised when like... The Quinn Snyder thing has been out there for months. Why is he trying to spin a narrative if he doesn't feel like a narrative needs to be spun? Well, he wants it out there that he's not the reason. I mean, I'm not the reason why that Quinn Snyder was fired. Not I'm not the reason this guy's going to get hired. Fire off a tweet. I didn't right. want Quinn Snyder fired. You like in this media media ecosystem, you I could guess you're do right. that. Yeah, but it has to be reported through an insider so that it has the credibility of. This is what's actually happening behind the scenes. And Donovan Mitchell can spin his narrative. Okay, but let's, if if we want to go back to the original story of what it is that I presented to you guys, because you took it in a number of different places that weren't the place that I was asking you about. Do you have any objection as someone who's listening to this, to the idea that your team, a team, or that team, that the sausage is made with... Donovan Mitchell being represented by CAA, Woj being used as a representative of CAA, if indeed you think these parts are being used to tell you a story that's not exactly true. It's just the story that they want told. And if he needs the credibility of a reporter to do it, if that's the one thing that he still needs, at what cost does that credibility start getting stained when you start putting these pieces together and showing everybody, hey, you know why Woj or part of the reason he's an insider? It's because he's connected up here with these pieces that are actually the power brokering pieces that tell the story. That That's still on the inside, though, Dan. It, it is on the inside, but Stugatz, last time we checked in, and this, this kind of skated weirdly, Windhorse was reporting, hey, Simmons to Harden is happening, and Woj is running up and down the hallways of ESPN yelling, That's not happening. It's not accurate. 
and he's yelling about it for 24 hours. A, a, a colleague who'd reported the accurate thing. And, and it's like, okay, well, what's the truth? Because I got insiders, and when, when there are this many compromises, this many conflicts, don't you think the truth gets lost? Because I'm sitting here trying to look at, like, isn't the truth what should matter here when it comes to the reporting of these things? Or is it okay that everyone's compromised? No one cares. This is the way the sausage is made. It's all entertainment. And I don't care what's true or not. I want to live my life like Stugatz. The truth doesn't matter. Just what I think is the truth matters. The truth has been lost on me for many, many decades. I don't care about the truth. You know when you find out the truth, Dan, when Donovan Mitchell, when the guy gets fired, Quinn Snyder, and the new coach comes in, you'll know the truth you'll know that it was donovan mitchell you'll know that woge was a part of it you'll know that the agency but had a hand in it. no i don't but i don't care about journalism the way you do or smetty does but or how about Whittingham the truth does. but how about the truth i don't care about the truth the okay. way you do okay I mean, but also in most cases i should <laughs> clarify that yeah. but also if you're a utah jazz fan and you see the writing on the wall that donovan mitchell doesn't want to be there anymore and this is the context that's being formed for why he's not going to be there anymore, then the truth matters to you. Like, if you're a fan of that team, and I understand that maybe the fans of the other 29 teams don't care. If if, if you're just a general NBA fan, you might not care. You just, where's Donovan Mitchell playing? Fair enough. But if you actually care about the Utah Jazz and Donovan Mitchell is figuring out, like other stars have before, how do I lay the context out for my departure I could understand why those fans would be upset and would read that tweet from that beat reporter and go, oh, I'm being played here. And I don't think a lot of people, once they find out that they're being played, like being played. Well, and you're the customer. This is what I'm telling you. This is the questions I'm asking you are about the truth. And now put your emotional investment in it. I'll move off this subject because we have spent precious little time talking about Quinn Snyder, unless it's to make fun of his appearance. I don't even know how to assess his tenure. Like, he won all the time and never enough. Goodbye, Quinn Snyder. <laughs> like they kept, the they kept winning and winning and winning all the time. And I didn't know Donovan Mitchell was that good. Oh, look, Donovan Mitchell is that good. Oh, Gobert and Mitchell. That's pretty good. That'll get you close. Not close enough. Goodbye, Quinn Snyder. They were the one seed last year, I believe. Lost to the Clippers in the Western Conference semifinals without Paul George or without Kawhi Leonard. Right, yeah. one of those two. I think it was without Kawhi. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was basically the end of that era. They tried to go for another year. Right. I also should clarify what Stu said because Quinn Snyder was not fired. He decided not to renew his contract. Yeah, step he down. Was, he was offered a significant extension, and he didn't want to take it for you know if he feels like regime change is coming because it certainly feels like we talked about blowing up the Heat earlier. The Utah Jazz are the prime candidate to be blown up this off season. And he might not want to be around for that and feels like he has enough well, cash to take I didn't, a better yeah, job. The headline was step down. The headline was not fired. Uh, fired was not the headline. It's just over for him in Utah. And I don't know. I mean, we don't have to spend any more time talking about the Utah Jazz, but I do present in front of the audience. I'd like to know what all of those conflicts are. I'm okay with the consumer being discerning. I'd just like to see, show me all of it so that I can make my own decisions on who I believe to be credible here or not. But I don't know, Stugatz. What do you do when Windhorst is running down one hallway in ESPN saying, Simmons for Harden is done, it's happening, and Woj is for 24 hours saying that's not happening, that reporting is wrong. Like when I present those two it's a things, battle of credibility right there. Um, I mean, I don't listen. You care about it more than I do. I, you know, I believe Windhorst when he says that that deal is done, but I'd also believe Woj if he were saying it. I mean, they're both very credible guys. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do, but I don't care. Like when it happens, it happens, and then I'll know. Uh, I don't need to know uh, before it happens. I want to just write a transcript of the last like four sentences. Yeah, it was just gibberish. Said. It was amazing gibberish. Yeah. Uh, Chris it's Cody, confusing you, all of it. You told I mean, me you don't care. Is Woj any less credible? Is Windhorse more credible? Who's the most I, you credible? Don't, you don't I mean, want to think about. You don't. Yes, 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 I mean, and, and I don't care if it's true. It, just yeah. put it on a shirt. We'll figure it out Angel, at some point. Yeah. Put it on a shirt. Give me my news, and I don't care if it's true. Uh, Chris Cody, why, why why were you appalled by what a woman in the grocery store was doing with a watermelon? <laughs> Uh, that's well, funny you say oh, this yeah. because I actually did research on it after and she actually was doing something kind of smart, but this is what I see. All right. So I'm at, uh, Trader Joe's yesterday. Oh. 
which I, you know, I'm a late bloomer on this. I like Trader Joe's. Oh nice. Yeah, it's good. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Do you like to Trader Joe's? What's your, mac favorite, and cheese what's your favorite Trader Joe's like frozen food thing? Ooh, I I have these uh, hash browns. The hash browns are fire. Yeah. The hash browns. Oh my God. Yeah. Next level. I saw it on TikTok. You make like avocado toast with the little hash browns. Oh, avocado toast hash browns. Yeah. Oh. yeah Jessica yeah. won't shut up about where's the chicken salad? Is it Fresh Market oh, or is fresh it somewhere else? Fre uh, yeah, Fresh Market, right? Fresh Market. That's what it's called. I don't know. They don't have them in New York, Dan, but I found one here, Miami Beach. The chicken salad. It has no business. You should try the wings. Yeah, the wings are excellent. Oh, only in the so cold. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Did we get to the origins of why it is that they're buffalo wings? I would like to get back to that. And also, Chris Cody has talked to Tim Kirkchen. I do. So I we've got some chicken definitive salad results. is a wow. hot weather food. Buffalo wings are a cold weather food. Continue with your Trader Joe's watermelon. But back to all right. Story. So watermelon. So the other day, before this trip to Trader Joe's, I bought a watermelon because it's a lot cheaper to buy an entire watermelon. But it's it it's no a shit. lot of work. Big big pain in the ass. Big no. I know it's obviously cheaper, but it's so much cheaper that it's like you know what? I'm going to try this. Let me see if it's worth it. Not worth it. I'd rather pay <laughs> really? triple the price for You're the right. Oh my God. No, so I, have a, fridge, it up. I yeah. have a fridge filled <laughs> with watermelon. Right. I could I could sell so much watermelon right now if I need. Yeah. It's so you, unnecessary. Okay, wait. Right. So you are saying not, wait a minute. Like it. It's not worth it, Dan. You are saying that nothing involved uh, with the whole watermelon is worth it because if you buy... A small container of watermelon, just it's like nine in, bucks in cubes. It's going to be about nine bucks. And if you bought your own watermelon, it was five bucks for the entire watermelon. And I got probably seven or eight times the amount that I would get. They're seeds. Oh, and you yeah. say none of it is worth it, though. I, 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 it was such a mess. And then now I have all this watermelon I have to stuff my fridge with. Now I have no room for anything else because I have so much watermelon in there. It's just no, it was not. At the well, end of the me, day, take me through the decision it was not making. worth it. So take me my through daughter, the, Daddy, I want that watermelon. I was like, oh, I've never done this with you. All right, I'll grab a watermelon. You've never bought a whole watermelon before? No. You're like in your 30s. Wait, what you you never the, it's bought who, a watermelon? Who does that when it's sliced? I, I, mean, I buy sliced watermelon. I buy watermelon all the time. Pre-cut fruit is the biggest scam what? in the entire it's such a rip off. In such the a entire rip -off. supermarket industry. But I get it industry. now because yeah. it's such a pain in the Listen ass to, to what carve Chris yourself. Is yeah. yes. You literally just cut it and then you like clean yeah. your counter off and you save five dollars. Yeah. But where do you put all that watermelon? You bury the exactly. seeds. You get a watermelon tree. Yeah, make, I did, a, make a margarita out of it. I looked up a YouTube hack on how to do it. I, f I have these like half of the watermelon is just little watermelon pops. You ever wow. do that? You ever do that way? A YouTube hack on how to cut a watermelon? Yeah, I've never done it before. Yeah. You don't. You guys don't YouTube everything the first time you do it. Yes. I bought a watermelon. I'm like, what's the best Hubba way? Hubba? So I'm not just like you know hacking at this thing. <laughs> yeah. And I did half of it this like cool trendy way where I have a bunch of. They're really cool. It's like a bunch of just like popsicles. Are they yeah, yeah, a little watermelon yeah, popsicles. Delicious, delicious, delicious cute, little yeah. snacks. And then the yeah. other half, I just did the standard size where you have like but your, your pizza slice. But you've got a fridge filled with watermelon, which isn't even what the woman was doing with the watermelon no, no, okay, in so the store. This got me interested in watermelon. So now, now this was a, like a four or five days ago when I carved the watermelon. Now I end up at Trader Joe's yesterday just doing a normal shopping thing. And I'm like, oh, look, there's the watermelons. I see this lady. She's like... She's like listening. She's like got her ear yeah. on the watermelon like and she's it? tapping on it. Yeah. I learned. Oh, she's not picking up the watermelon. No, no. She is well, leaning yeah. up to the first produce. She's caressing. Aisle. First, she's like rubbing yeah. it. She's like, is this how's it feel? How's the texture it, yeah. of this thing? Oh, Apparently, yeah. you're supposed to look for if it has like a yellow patch yeah. on the watermelon. That's a good sign yeah. for your watermelon. Yeah. Also, I Googled this after. So I saw this lady. I was yeah. like, but that's she's weird. listening to it like somebody's yeah. tapping on it. Like an like a shell it. listening to the ocean. She's tapping on it. And apparently I Googled it because like, I was like, if I'm going to talk about this on the show, I want to like have some knowledge here. Yeah. Apparently <laughs> you want, because normally I would just start talking about this shit and not really think about yeah. it. So I was like, let me do some prep. Let me Google. Right. So you did the so watermelon. I Googled, journalism. I Googled, yeah. listening, the place, I I Googled mean. listening to a watermelon. <laughs> yeah. And apparently <laughs> you want a watermelon with a lot of water in it. Oh, no, no, no. Not a lot of... Oh, you want it to go. sound hollow. Jesus Christ. Attention. Listen, Jesus right, Christ, Regardless Chris. of what, Chris. whether there's water or he not did look in it. it up. Chris, what, you looked the, it up. The sound you're going for, you want hollow. Yeah. You, you want to listen. You want it to bounce and like, vibrate If you tap it and you, and you hear hollow, me, that's a good watermelon. Me. Yeah, pick me, pick me. Pick me, right. take me home. Yeah. yeah. I was just like, that is so odd. The lady with the, all the confidence oh, in the world was just listening to a watermelon. But and, hey, and touching it and touching it. Yeah, that's about you get thing. your hands off the watermelon. I might buy if yeah. you don't buy it. Wow. How's that sound? Like that. Well, we've I played mean, this seriously. game before. I've asked you. Like I've asked you guys before if I'm allowed to fondle fruit yeah, before I. Yes. Like <laughs> I buy it. Put it, put it on the poll. The would, would you immediately buy? Put on the poll, please. At Levitard Show. Would you immediately buy a watermelon that had had someone's ear on it seconds earlier? <laughs> so, 
ear. Ear to the watermelon. I am not doing that. I am going to the next watermelon that hasn't had an ear placed. But now I get because in this YouTube video, it said wash the watermelon before you uh, before you carve it. But I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to eat the outer. I'm not going to eat. But this, there's germs on the skin. That's, I get it now. And ear germs, apparently. Yeah. Like, it all made yeah. sense a couple days later Herms. at Trader yeah. Joe's. I'm like, that's why they want you to wash it. Because <laughs> this eat, lady's ears all over this damn yeah. thing. You eat watermelon seeds now, right? Like, yeah. that's an old wives' tale. Like, they used yeah. to tell you, like, oh, you eat a black watermelon seed, there's going to be a watermelon plant that grows out of your lower that's intestine. That's true. If you don't buy the full watermelon, do you go slices or cubes? What's your cubes. preference? I like slices. Like the pizza slice? Yeah, like the nah. pizza you, you slice. Guys, yeah, you like guys, six slices. Though, you guys are, though, the, you really are the height of spoiled. <laughs> that if it's not cubed for you, you don't want the other one that gives you seven and eight times the value as watermelon because now you've got too much watermelon in your fridge. Because you're cutting a bunch of watermelons? I'm I mean, just not the one out here who is saying um, that I, for the first time, has tried the watermelon and is such a hardship that I would be willing now <laughs> to pay $10 for seven watermelon cubes. I'm not the one this morning who has a fridge full of watermelon and has discussed- Way too much watermelon. And discovered the I brought joys. it to my parents' house yesterday. I'm like, take watermelon because I just have <laughs> You're handing it way out. too much. You're the watermelon fairy of yeah. the neighborhood. They should just sell half watermelons too. I'd buy more watermelons if you could. I just, yeah, half way too big. What do I need idea. all this watermelon yeah. for? Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the only reason to buy wow. the normal size one is if you're feeding a family of six. Because otherwise, w would it be preferable, Dan, if I, instead of buying the cubes, bought a big watermelon and it all went bad? Is that is that preferable? Yeah. You buy the the cubes, the prepackaged watermelon, so you're not putting Just watermelon to waste. Just buy a different waste. fruit if you don't have if they only have giant watermelons and you're one person. Just are there buy small watermelons? Fruit. I'm unaware yes, of. Yes, there are. Where are there? Where are where? there small watermelons? I've seen small watermelons. Yeah, me too. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Are there Seedless. small watermelons? There are. They're cute. Very cute. <laughs>